today we'll be talking about typography so typography is everywhere we go um, we can find typography in the books we read we can find typography in the websites we vi visit we can find typography on our street signs we can find them on product adverts we can find them on product packaging so basically typography is everywhere we go in a very simple form we can see typography as the style or appearance of text or the art of working with text so typography or working with text is something that you work on daily if you type projects or create documents you find that typography is something that you encounter every day the use of typography can be confusing or intimidating in design um, i noticed so many designers have the simple problem of how to use typography very well but you don't really need to be a pro to be able to use it perfectly you just need to have a basic idea and you can make a huge difference in your design so firstly we are going to analyze some very common types of fonts and the first type is serif the first type of font we see is serif okay so i'll just go ahead to my font selection and select a serif font all right if you're using photoshop you can go to where it stated all classes and you can change it to serif and to show you every font that is classified as serif i will just go ahead and use a braille fat face all right this is a serif font now what makes this a serif serif fonts are known for their external strokes that are attached to the edges of the letters you see this stroke i'll just use my selection tool here let's zoom in a bit so i'll use my rectangular selection to select this so this stroke here that are at the extended parts of the fonts you can see them here you can also see them here these are called the serif so fonts that have these extended strokes are what we call the serifs now serifs are good choices for traditional designs um they are also common in print publications like magazines and newspapers it's easier for people to read now the next type of font another type that you've gotten from the serif but this now is called sans serif so we'll just go ahead also change our classes to sans serif so that we can select something that's a sans serif um i'll just go ahead with gotham so we'll just select gotham here now sans in french the word sans this in french means without so all these fonts simply means without serif so in as much as sans um the serif font has these external um extrusions here the sans do not have it okay you can see that the sans do not have it so that's what basically differentiates the serif from the sans serif uh, this font the sans serif font is being considered as being more clean and modern in typography it's it's also seen as a font that is easier to read on screens including laptops and smartphones so basically these sans serif fonts i think it's more perfect when you're working on the body of a design because it's easier for people to read like it's way easier for people to read so using sans serif fonts as a body for your designs is like a perfect option you can also use it as a title uh, but when working with it as a title you know you have to change the different weights um the different weights basically uh, we will get to that so the next type of fonts we need to talk about is the display the display fonts okay so let's just go here again and find a display font let's see okay we really don't have a display font here but a black letter is a type of a display font a handwriting is type of a different uh, a display font decorative is also type of a display font so we can use anyone let's just check out black letter nope check out handwriting okay yes this decorative is a type of a display font there is a particular font i'm looking for yeah let's go with cooperative games okay now this is a display font um display fonts are used for display or heading purposes thus they are not very suitable for body copy okay so when working with a display font let's limit the usage of a display font you don't use a display font um on a very high basis or on a very large amount you use it on a very small amount like on titles or headers on 
a newspaper or a graphic design now the last type of font to check out is the script the script okay so let's just go ahead actually the script is um, a subtype of the display font but most times we just try to give it um, keep it apart to avoid confusion so I'll just take a simple script here okay, I have um, I really have lots of scripts let's just look for something that is simple okay let's look for dark large all right this is good so now we have the script font script typefaces can also be used as display type typefaces as I already said and they are quite formal like very formal in appearances it's essential to know that using a script typeface should be done in a very low amount very very low amount because people get tired or people get exhausted reading scripts so just use your script font as a display just as i've already suggested use it as a display um it can work well if you're using it um as a title or uh, yeah basically as a title for your design rather than using it as the body of the design now um there are type there are fonts some types of fonts that are outdated so to say yeah those fonts are outdated basically because those fonts are mm, they are custom fonts that came up with the system okay let's see if we can find some of these fonts fonts like uh, okay i'll take out to duplicate this fonts like comic sans Yeah, it should be here. Yeah, fonts like um, Comic Sans. Then you have another one called uh, Papyrus. Okay. Papyrus. So basically, you see that every system. Um, or every let's use microsoft system every windows operating system has these basic fonts and i really advise you to avoid these fonts like run away from them these ones are way way outdated and if you are still using this font right now you are you don't want to grow up okay so these fonts have a bad reputation a very bad reputation of being outdated there are so many other fonts that can you use in place of these fonts so you need to find a way to avoid these outdated fonts because it gives you a bad reputation and when working with fonts learn to use less limit um limit the use of your font to probably one or two fonts per design one or two okay so don't be scared don't be scared to use just one font and you can go ahead you can do a whole design with just one font i've done it plenty times so just know that when working with your font stick to one or two if you get carried away as most you can do is way but this um the smaller or the lesser you use the better now let's talk about some rules when it comes to working with text number one thing i need to make you understand is opposites attract so don't be afraid or don't be scared to combine fonts that are different but complementary so you can decide to make a design with sans and serif okay well it's actually perfect if you design to design with um, a sans and a serif together so here the serif can work as the title okay and the sans serif can work as the body of the letter so just know that when you're working with a design the use of sans and serif it's very essential if you want to maintain contrast or maintain um this rule that i just thought about that opposites attract okay you can also decide to use long and short um fonts okay let's see an example of a long form of a long font here i think i'll just go ahead and duplicate this sorry this is short okay 
So an example of a long font is Bibas. Yes, I got it. So you can feel free to use a long font like this. All right. So a quick reminder, a quick reminder, a quick reminder. This Bebas is a display font. So you know what I said about display font. So you can feel free to use um, a long font and a short font. Use a serif and a sans serif. Okay. Let's just get this down for clarity. Then you can also decide to use decorative fonts, but in a very simple way. Um, basically, I like combining decorative fonts with sans serif. It's much easier to read so that when um, the eyes of your reader get distracted from the whole exhaustion of the script, it can be very easy for them to focus on the sans serif, which is basically easy to read like way easy to read so i like combining my serif with uh i like combining my okay i would say if you say it's confusing me i like combining my scripts with a sans serif so it makes it easier to read when you're confused about the use of text it's okay for you to check the designs of others um to give you an idea of what you're working with and um, give you inspiration as well you can even use one typeface and simply change the font to create a variety within. Um, let's try out something like that. Okay, let's use serif, sans serif, because I think it works perfectly if you're trying to create something like this. You can create a whole design with this. Um, let's just say, um, let's just say, what should we say? Okay, let's say leadership. Alright, so leadership should be the so all right so you can play around with this notice that i'm using one typeface all right so i can decide to take it off because there are so many weights give it a broader weight um reduce the canning we we'll get to this reduce the leading um the canning a bit you can make it minus 18. all right to give it a bit more clarity now so now that we have it okay so this is the footer um i think i'll just add a bunch of custom text to this so select your text tool and okay sorry was this supposed to happen that way select your text tool and type so give me stuff like this i can go back to book okay then take out the size a bit yeah So I've just created a very simple typeface using custom text and a lay, uh, so you can create a whole amount of design using stuff like this. Uh, you can create a whole design using stuff like this. You're just working with typeface, one typeface with uh, different adjustments, okay? Different adjustments, but the same typeface. So when you're confused about uh, the combination of different typefaces you can also try using just one typeface um there's nothing wrong with it it will still give you a very 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 good design okay now we need to talk about some other basic concepts of text that can get confusing tracking is the overall space between characters sometimes it's called spacing now what are your characters the characters are each letter in um a particular typeset so let's consider this where they just wrote out here leadership so this pay the the tracking between the tracking in this word now is the space between this l and this e the space between this e and this a so to adjust the tracking um in design softwares they already have a tracking tool here you can see where they say say the tracking for the selected character now i'm using a minus 80 tracking here if I take it down to zero, the tracking spreads. If I increase it a bit, the tracking keeps adjusting. Okay, now it's understandable to know how to adjust your tracking depending on what you're or what you're working with. Okay, so I just have to take this down to okay, this is too much. Take it down to let's say minus 80. 
okay let's get back to verse 8 now this is perfect now the next thing we'll talk about is leading leading is the space between the lines of a typeset okay so i'm using this one i'm using this one so it's is is the spacing between the lines of text it can also be called line spacing now also in your softwares they have options now you see once once my uh once my mouse hovers here you see photoshop tell me to set the leading so all i have to do is increase it and the space in between the lines of the text increases as well so bringing it down or reducing it it adjusts as well so um leading comes in handy when you're working on magazines or when you're working on large publications where people need to read clearly without stressing their eyes so you can adjust the leading accordingly or even the tracking that can bring changes down to 20 okay i think 20 is too much i meant minus 20 so bring it down to minus 20 yeah it's clearer and it's easier for people to read now just looking at it it's easier for people to read now another thing we need to consider is kerning now kerning is the specific space between the characters okay now um some fonts have bad kerning so the difference between kerning and tracking is that tracking works on all the shapes together or not the shapes sorry all the characters together but kerning is the specific shape now let's take a look at this um i'm using the same tracking for all of them that's minus 20 but if you look here you see that the r and the s are touching each other here we are whereas the rest of the space in between the letters there's a bit of a space here okay you see there's a space here there's a space here there's a space here okay i think i should use something to clarify this let's get a rectangle okay so um change the color to yellow okay so we'll just use this rectangle as as a system of measurements per se okay now look at this you notice that the rectangle fits perfectly here and this is supposed to be the direct tracking of this text so if i take this rectangle here as well it fits but what about here okay now it doesn't fit because there is a bad kerning between this r and the s okay uh, i think there's a bad kerning here too yep see there's a whole lot of space in between in between them now so so kerning is the specific space between um between two characters so unlike Kenny, unlike tracking it doesn't work with other characters and to uh the only way to adjust this is by the use of your space key okay sometimes you can overdo it but you can use your space key or find alternative ways to adjust your kerning i can create a space key and take down this tracking more yeah so i have something like this okay so i think this is better if you if you are confused you can try the system i used the system of um the rule uh the rectangle i drew up you can try that system use it as a point of measurement for your kerning okay now quick now uh the next tip we need to talk about is learn to justify left okay learn to justify left if you're working on a text justifying left makes it easier to read like way easier to read okay let's say i justify right now okay justifying right is still good but people mostly adapt to justifying left okay um what if you justify center i would say this is not really the worst of it but most people don't really get uh attracted or get easily attracted to justifying with the center but if you're working on some kind of publications you may also consider justifying to the center but apart from that it's advisable to just stick with justifying to the left it's easier to read it's easier to read now the next thing i need to understand is if it's possible if it's possible with you use one font 
if it's possible with you use one font if it's possible use one font okay using two fonts means you need to understand how to combine them for example don't use two sans serif okay now i'm using one font here this is one sans serif if i go ahead to use another sans serif okay let's see if, let me get let me get another sans serif let's see let's see i get um a case deck to your eyes this looks good but they are not the same fonts and they are the same font family or font group so it's a bit confusing so we are going to use different fonts make sure you don't combine the same um two fonts that are of the same family so you don't combine two sans serif or combine two serif or combine two slab serif or combine two script faces together the reason for this is very simple contrast you need to maintain contrast in your design i can decide to play around with this and use two fonts um let's say i can decide to use a script somewhere here okay it still works perfectly just adjust the kernel it still works perfectly i can decide to use a slab serif okay i got an extra slab here I can decide to use a slab serif um adjust is a bit it still works perfectly i can decide to use um, a simple serif here okay this abrio typeface it still works perfectly so if you're going to use two fonts make sure you use two fonts that uh, make sure you understand how to use two fonts do it in a way that you maintain your contrast but if you can't just stick with one design or uh, stick with one font and make adjustment to it now something else you need to learn when typing is skip a weight okay when working with fonts families you need to skip a weight okay let's take this up and let's say we create a bit of a heading um let's just call this let's just use the custom text So we are going to give a bit clarity to this text it's okay to it's normal to skip a weight now i'm working with gotham and the weight i'm working with currently is book so after book you see medium and after medium you see bold so skip medium and go to bold that's what i mean skip a weight when you're working with font families you skip a weight just like this it gives it more clarity you can decide to um adjust it a bit okay but understand that you have to skip a weight just to give it more clarity okay now the next thing <coughs> you have to do is to double your point size um i didn't really apply that rule here so let's say i'm working with the first let's say for the body of the text i'm working with a 15 a 15 point size here i just adjusted that to 15 then the title if it's okay you can work with the 30 okay i was close to getting that you can work with 30 so you just double the point size it's just for clarity just for clarity when you're working on a 15 or you're working on a particular number for your body you can double the point size um for the heading so remember the main reason for this is still clarity clarity then when working with your text avoid corners don't let the text touch your corners now your text touching your corners can cost um can cause issues it's it's really not a good look so avoid your text touching the corners you can give give them you can give them a one inch um probably one inch or a hundred centimeters or 100 pixels points okay just give them a bit space but let there be enough margin so that people can read it easily do not place your elements at the edge of your document unless you deliberately want to cut them unless it's deliberate let's say you want to do something like this okay unless you deliberately want to cut them as part of your design um you can do something like this in the design yeah it's it's still understandable but if you don't have any plan 
to deliberately cut them like this just avoid placing them avoid placing your text on the edge of your paper but if you have the idea of coming up with a simple design like this uh, like this leadership down here then it's okay to want to cut them okay it's okay to want to cut out the design then mind the gap between your text and sentences especially when you are arranging in paragraphs now this is where tracking and kenning comes in place okay so note the kind of gap you create in between your text here or in between the line space now this knowing the gap knowing the gap you are raising knowing the gap you are raising gives people more clarity um makes it easier for people to read so basically everything we've learned, learned right here should give you a basic knowledge on how to use your text when it comes to design do not overuse it make sure you spend uh, enough time figuring out the kind of text will be suitable for the design you want to come up with and to this effect we are going to be doing um a simple we're going to be doing a simple design um so to say following a certain amount of rules um on the description box in this video i'm going to list out the exercise or the assignments that you need to do okay so let's just create a new document i'll just create a seven by five documents um here okay so what i want you guys to do as an exercise for these classes get a quote just a random quote a quote that you really like um then simply use only typography only typography to create the quotes just type out the quotes in a very creative and fun way the maximum you are allowed to use is three fonts that's the maximum do not use more than three fonts so um for me i'm going to do something here real quick so that you can understand uh what i want you guys to do uh let me choose which quote should i use now which quote should i use i think i'll just type out the quote first um we spend so much time crying about wasted time okay yeah this these are recent quotes i just came across so it's been on my mind for the past couple days all right so i said something about not aligning to the center don't forget i'm still serious about it but for my design i think i need to do something um extreme so let me see how much how i'm going to create this okay so just type this up just type this up here um i think i have to keep this to the center yeah mm, i know i know i know i said don't use your center alignment unless you have to so i'm just i'm creating a poster okay this is a poster so i'm i'm trying to incorporate everything to be um how do i say this to, di to be a display so i think putting it on the center will be very good when i said do not use centralize is when you're typing in paragraphs for a publication in a magazine it's very hard for people to read so we spend so much okay so i think i'll just get i'll just get my ruler here so i can maintain balance on the side of the text okay so just take this back so we spend so much so much now remember i'm using the same fonts i just i just want to make a few adjustments okay so i uh, think no need to no need to adjust no need to adjust the weight so you can just bring down the cracking a bit okay make it 10 or not let's make it 500 yep so we have something like this we spend so much time i said the limit you can use is 
three fonts so i think i will go ahead and uh, i will use three fonts here mm, let's see Mm. Okay, just use this. Make it zero and um. So let's <coughs> so let's stick with using just three fonts, just three. So I've I've gotten my second font. I think I'll just duplicate this because I'm using the same thing. Spend so spend so much time. Quiet. Okay. about um I think I should make my okay just, just figure out how, how to do this right now mm. Mm. how about just maintaining this okay Let's just maintain this. Just maintain the tracking and increase the font size. Okay. Mm. No, no. It looks bad. 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 Alright. Um Okay, now this is to show you that working with text isn't really as easy as you think. Mm, there's still the tricks uh, that you need to know about. So, check out how to stick with this. Just adjust it um, a little further. So, we spend so much time crying about. Wasted time. Um, my wasted. I think it should be a script. Yeah, I, w I also forgot to make something. Um, to make it very important. Yeah, I forgot to say something very important. When working with scripts, avoid using it in all caps. It doesn't go well. Okay. So scripts typefaces work very well or work better when they are working at no caps basically so don't use your script typesetting in all caps something like this no just maintain your caps so since you already have this i'll just go ahead and duplicate this time and that's it okay we've designed a simple poster using type only and only type can just play around with this right now. Let's say I change this to black and I draw up a rectangle right about here. Okay. Oh 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 sorry, so sorry. I said no shapes. Just take this out. So no shapes, just your text. You play around with your text. Don't use more than three fonts. So the maximum you're allowed to use a straight font and um so that's right about it so spend as much as you can trying to figure out the kind of fonts you want on your design and it will really go a long way to giving you clarity about how your design should work out the use of fonts is very very essential in design if you can figure out how to use your fonts very well um you've you've overcome a very important step of designing and you've come to the stage where you can take your design to the next level so study your fonts um, know how to use them well and you're already a pro 
see you in upcoming classes